So let me tell you a little bit of story. So I think stories are important. And I'm going to tell you what the Vietnam veteran means to me. Because I was one of those kids that grew up in the 1960s. In fact, I was born in 1963. And I remember those video clips on TV you know, of our soldiers as you guys were over there. And as you were fighting for our country, and you didn't have a choice in the matter. In fact, many of you were draftees. You were told to go, and you did. You saluted the flag, and you drove on, and you represented our country for what our country believed was the right thing to do in this world. And you went over. And then I remember as a child, an absolute disgrace that went on with how the soldiers were viewed, both on TV and I remember as I walked through. Now, there was something else you know, that I remember, too. Now, I remember having those Veterans Day parades and all the soldiers being out there and in line in World War II and World War I. And those soldiers marching out. And I remember as a young child standing on the side, going, you know what? I want to be one of them. I mean, God, what an what a honor. They marched proud, you know, with, with their heads up. And I never forgot that. You know? And, and, then, and then I had this opportunity to come into the Army. Okay? And, and I came in 1982, as I said. And it wasn't exactly the most popular thing to do, okay? You know, get your hair cut, get it real short, you know, but it was something, it was, it was an opportunity for me. It was an opportunity for me to help me pay for college, you know? And I understood that there was something that I had to pay back to. You know, it wasn't for free. But you know, when I talk about that, and I talk about the monetary piece, I didn't quite understand what I was getting into in 1982 as an 18-year-old kid. Because what I got into was the greatest brotherhood in this, in this country. And I went through that basic training, and I was changed. I was a changed person for life. Those standards and that discipline that those drill sergeants put into me were absolutely unbelievable. I came out feeling like I was somebody. I came out more physically fit. I came out believing in myself. And I've carried that along through my entire life. Now, went to flight school. I'm kind of going to fast forward a little bit through college, and then I get, I go and I, I get this opportunity to be an aviator. Some of you relate? Anybody, any aviators in the room? Whoa. And I get to go to flight school, and I go to my first Army Reserve unit, Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. Let me tell you what I ran into in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, and in the Army Reserve, and I'm sure the National Guard was the same. 85% of my unit was ex-Vietnam veterans, former Vietnam veterans. And I will tell you that my education only just began. I had senior warrant officers that had thousands, thousands of combat hours that took me underneath their wing and taught me how to fly a human helicopter. Now, they didn't take it from me. You know, when it, when it kind of got a little bit, they let me take it all the way down until it was almost ready to crash. And why? Because they understood that the only way that I could really learn was to take it down to where I had to be able to feel it. And they knew that. They understood that. And you know what? The other thing they did was they took care of their own. Okay? There weren't people we didn't have to we grab somebody on the side and say, hey, come on over here, let's talk. You know, that was my NCO corps. 
I had an E, I had an E7 that made me his lieutenant. Anybody relate? Okay, that would, and let me tell you something. Bill Fiedler, he taught me everything I knew. Bill Fiedler took me underneath his wing, and he made me into the lieutenant that I am. And then I had other senior officers that took me in and gave me those examples that I needed. You know, told me that, you know what? When you go to work, it's still going to be there tonight. Go home on time. You know, it's going to be there tomorrow. You know, they talked to me about family values because they didn't always have a chance to be around with family. They taught me a lot of different things that, I, uh, that I've used in my career that I've tried to continue through and, and pass along. So when I talk about the veteran, when I talk about especially the Vietnam veterans, you all are so, so very special to us. And I can tell you that my last greatest honor was a Vietnam veteran in my unit was in 2009 when I had the, the honor to retire one of my warrant officers that had flown, and he just got, you know, we just get a little older, and they wouldn't let him fly anymore, and I had to, but we got to give him the honor that he was able to as he went out the door. We got the fire engines to shoot it across, you know, as he rolled that black, that Apache helicopter across the line. God, what a great time. So I want to say thank you to everyone that served in this, this our, in our military. You and every one of you are truly heroes in my heart, in my family's heart. And when I go up to a veteran, regardless if you've served 30 years or you received the tour, you've served our country. And not everybody can say that today. You know, as Colonel Jacobs said, less than 1%, oh, by the way, I was on recruiting command, so you probably get a little recruiting here. Okay, less than 1% of our country serves. Less than 6% have served. So we have this demographic that gets farther and farther apart. And so when I talk to young men and women, you know, they would say it's kind of hard to sell something that you don't believe in. I can talk about this experience all day long because of what it's given me. You know? I think military service is the only way to go. Now, it's not for everybody, but I can give you all the benefits of why it is and why you should. At least give it a shot. Whether it be in the active component, whether it be in the guard, whether it be in the Army Reserve. But at the end of the day, you will never be one of those people that come to me and go, you know what? I wish I would serve. And I get a lot of it. So thank you all for what you do. Thank you all for what you've done. And I just ask that you continue to do the things that you do so well. And that's talk about our great nation and what it means to be a veteran and what it means to serve. So I salute you. Good job, well done.